Crohn's disease is a type of inflammatory bowel disorder that causes swelling of the tissues in your digestive tract. This can lead to abdominal pain, severe diarrhea, fatigue and weight loss. However, the exact cause of Crohn's disease is still considered as unknown. Question number 1 Nurse Mimi is providing education to a group of students that Crohn's disease is most likely to develop in what part of gastrointestinal tract? A. Duodenum of the small intestine. B. Terminal ileum. C. Descending colon. D. Rectum. The correct answer is letter B. Terminal ileum. Though Crohn's disease can happen in any part of GI tract, most patients develop it in the terminal ileum. The reason why Crohn's disease is primarily located in the distal part of the ileum remains unexplained. However, it is believed that is most likely linked to the concentration of bacteria in the said area. Question number 2 you're providing teaching to a Andy who was newly diagnosed with Crohn's disease. Which statement by Andy requires re-education? A. There is no cure for Crohn's disease. B. Strictures are common complication with Crohn's disease. C. It can cause the hostra of the large intestine to lose its form. D. It can be scattered throughout the GI tract in patches with some areas appearing healthy while others are diseased. Let's apply the process of elimination. Currently there is no cure for Crohn's disease and there is no single treatment that works for everyone. One goal of medical treatment is to reduce the inflammation that triggers the signs and symptoms. Therefore, option A is a correct statement. One of the most common complications of Crohn's disease is the development of an intestinal stricture narrowing the intestine. This makes the food difficult to pass through, making option B a correct statement. Hostra are saccules in the colon that give it segmented appearance. These saccules are not deformed in patients diagnosed with Crohn's disease, making option C an incorrect statement. Crohn's disease can be scattered throughout the GI tract in patches with some areas appearing healthy while others are diseased, making option D a correct statement. Therefore, the correct answer is letter C. Question number 3. Dr. Yu is explaining to Andy that his Crohn's disease was found in both the ileum and colon. As the nurse, you know this type of Crohn's disease is called? A. Gastroduodenal Crohn's disease. B. Granulomatous colitis. C. Ileitis. D. Iliocolitis. The correct answer is, letter D, ileocolitis. There are five types of Crohn's disease depending on the location of the inflammation. First we have, gastroduodenal Crohn's disease, affects the stomach and duodenum or the first part of the small intestine. Next we have, jejunoileitis, occurs in the jejunum and in the upper part of ileum. Ileitis, causes inflammation and irritation of the ileum. Ileocolitis, for ileum extending to the colon. Lastly, we have Crohn's colitis, also known as granulomatous. This type of Crohn's disease affects the colon which is the main part of the large intestine. Question number 4 Andy with Crohn's disease was admitted with an opening that has formed between the bowel and urinary bladder. As the nurse, you know this complication is known as A rectovaginal stricture b enterovesical fistula c enteroenteric fistula d perianal fissure the correct answer is letter b enterovesical fistula fistulas are abnormal connections between an organ vessel or intestine and another organ in this illustration the urinary bladder and the colon as a fistula connecting them together. This is known as enterovesical fistula. Strictures are narrowing or constriction of the lumen of a tube, duct, or hollow organ such as the intestines. 
Fissures are breaks or slits in tissue usually at the junction of skin and mucous membrane. Common cause of an intestinal fissures include constipation and straining or passing hard or large stools during a bowel movement. Question number five. Andy, who was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, undergone colonoscopy. Which findings do you expect from the procedure? A. Overgrowth of intestinal villi. B. Small, bulging pouches develop in your digestive tract. C. Flattened intestinal villi. D. Cobblestone appearance throughout the affected area. The correct answer is, letter D, cobblestone appearance throughout the affected area. Crohn's disease can involve not only in the colon but also in the small intestine and frequently presents with deep ulcers. The deep ulcers with a longitudinal array create a cobblestone appearance. Question number six. Andy, who was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, was ordered complete bowel rest by the physician. You are administering TPN, total parenteral nutrition, per physician order. When developing the patient's nursing plan of care, which nursing diagnosis is most important to include in the care plan? A. Risk for imbalance nutrition, less than body requirements. B. Risk for allergy response. C. Risk for unstable blood glucose level. D. Risk for imbalance nutrition, more than body requirements. The correct answer is, letter A, risk for imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements. Nutrients we ingest through food should be in adequate amounts to essentially meet our body's metabolic demands. Patients under total parenteral nutrition are at risk for not being able to meet up these requirements, so this is the priority nursing diagnosis to be considered. Question number 7. Andy is receiving treatment for Crohn's disease. Her spouse doesn't require further education if he says that Andy should avoid which of the following food in the tray? A. White rice. B. Fresh salad. C. Baked chicken. D. Cooked skinless apples. The correct answer is, letter B, fresh salad. It is not advisable for a person with Crohn's disease to eat fresh and raw fruits because it can cause irritation in the gut. Food should be well cooked or steamed if necessary. Question number 8. Andy, who was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, has a serum potassium level of 3.4 milliequivalents per liter. Which action should the nurse implement first? A. Notify the healthcare provider. B. Prepare to administer potassium IV. C. Request telemetry for the client. D. Assess the client for muscle weakness. The correct answer is, letter D. Assess the client for muscle weakness. In most cases, questions that would ask what to do first, should focus more on assessing something before doing any further action. The normal level of serum potassium is 3.5 to 5.5 milliequivalents per liter. Muscle weakness may be a sign of hypokalemia which can lead to cardiac dysrhythmias. How many correct answers did you get? I know you got it all correctly, but wait, don't forget to hit on subscribe button and turn on notification bell so that you will be notified for upcoming videos. You can also share this to your friends. Goodbye.